So I just got done reviewing my second Gelo riser and this Gelo GF is one of my favorite risers thus far except for one massive problem. And in this video I'm going to show you why people struggle to get their limbs out of their Gelo bows after they align the limbs. I want to start this video off by first and foremost saying this is not a hater video. I am not doing this to tear apart the company. I'm doing this because I'm genuinely curious. Number one, because I struggle to get my limbs out of this bow in every GLO that I've ever aligned. There's something going on with the actual adjustment here, the lateral limb adjustment and the tightening mechanism. And I'm going to delve into that very deep in this video and pull things apart, look at things up close and figure out exactly what's going on. So that way maybe GLO can make some adjustments because genuinely I believe personally that this is a flaw, a design flaw, not necessarily something that I'm doing wrong or that you're doing wrong at home if you've ever gotten your limbs stuck in your GLO. The first thing that you see when you read the manual is, you know, the operation of the lateral limb adjustment system and all of the information in here. And it tells you to make sure you tighten the screws, right? But down at the bottom in the yellow, they have a big warning there and it states warning and this is verbatim tightening too much. The side grub screws may bring to difficulty in inserting and removing the limbs from the dovetails in the pockets. Vibrations during use may unlock the side grub screws if not locked with thread locker. Check them time by time. So basically what they're saying here is that if you tighten the grub screws too much on the sides, you won't be able to get your limbs in and out easily. And so you should use Loctite because then you won't you need to over tighten them to keep them from vibrating loose and to just check them from time to time to make sure everything's good to go. Now that's all sounds well and fine and I'm okay with that statement, but I did a little bit of digging into the actual fastener size of the lateral limb adjustment screws, the grub screws, and the approximate torque specs that would be reasonable for the length of fastener as well as what the fastener is going into and the grade of fastener. So I have a chart that I'm going to put up on the screen that references torque values for various different hardware in metric. And what it'll show you is M5 hardware in coarse thread, which these are the torque specs for grade 4.8 hardware, which is the lowest grade hardware. And I'd be shocked if Gelo's using this hardware. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But M5 hardware in grade 4.8, the torque spec is 3.6 newton meters. Now I'm assuming that the hardware that Gelo uses is more like 6.8 or 8.8 .8 grade. And in general, the higher the grade hardware, the more torque that this hardware can sustain without deforming. However, we're going into aluminum and it's not two times the length of the diameter of the actual bolt. The bolt diameter is about 4.8, 4.9 millimeters and the actual grub screws are just under six millimeters long. So I'm gonna say a reasonable torque figure would be somewhere in the range of two Newton meters to be very, very conservative and very, very safe. So what I've got here is a torque limiting screwdriver that you can essentially adjust to set the actual torque limit before this thing slips over a cam and clicks when you exceed the torque values or match the torque values that you have selected on the, the unit. So if you see here, there's a graduated scale. Now this one is in uh, pound feet inches. So I'm gonna have to convert Newton meters to you know, mini freedom units here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set this thing to approximately two Newton meters, which is just over 17 and a half pound feet inches. So what I'm gonna do is set this thing to 17 pound feet inches. So if you check here, I'm just over the 15 mark and I'm just past the five by two hash marks. So I'm now at 17 pound feet inches, which is basically like 1.99 something or other Newton meters. So what I'm gonna do first is take the locks out of the top pocket. I'm going to crack the adjusters, the actual pieces underneath. Actually, first I'm gonna take them out and show you that they are zinc coated hardware and this is not brass. So it's not soft like some people believe it is. So you can see these are zinc coated. Like I said, about six millimeters long. Put this one back in and I'm just gonna touch the actual adjuster 
and let it sit there. And from now on, I'm not going to cut so you, that way you can see that I'm not screwing around here with the actual footage. So this is just snug. And then I'm going to take my Allen wrench bit here, insert it into the riser, and I'm going to turn it until you hear a click. All right, so now we're at the torque spec of just under two newton meters on one side and the other side. I'm going to do it again so you can hear it, right? So it's pretty simple. I'll do two clicks on each side. I've already done one on this side. All right, so two newton meters. Actually, I forgot to put the limb in. So hold on, crack this free, crack that free, put the limb in, okay. Take it, click, click, right? Two, just to be sure, you wanna make sure that it didn't prematurely click too low. Cannot get it out. So that's only two newton meters, way under what should be reasonable for this size fastener in my opinion. All right, so seeing how two newton meters was too much, let's now adjust this thing. You'll see I'm at 15, I'm at the five, back it down to 10. Actually, we'll go just over one newton meters because it's 8.8 .8 pound feet inches. So I'm at nine pound feet inches. That should be just about one newton meter. Take a limb, put it in the bow, and you'll hear the click is gonna be much quieter because it's way less torque, right? Get both sides. I want two clicks on both just because I wanna make sure it's reasonably close to one Newton meter. I can't. That's ridiculous. So it should come out with way less force Break it free, the limb will go in. Real easy, come out real easy. All right, so let's try one more time. I'm gonna back this thing down now. So we're at 10. I'm gonna back this thing to five pound feet inches. So five pound feet inches, which I think is just over a half a newton meter, 0.56 newton meters, I believe. And now it comes out with a reasonable, a reasonable amount of effort. It's still very hard, still very difficult. And I find children for sure would not be able to get this thing out. Most men wouldn't either. The technique that I use of pushing the thumb against the actual riser as I'm squeezing the limb really makes it easy to pop limbs out that are difficult. I think it is reasonable to say that there's something wrong with the design that would require you to tighten it to about a half a newton meter to still get the limbs out of the pocket. Now, we've heard, I've heard at least, that this has to do with the tolerance of this adjuster block being so high because there is no actual ILF standard. There's a rough rule of thumb, but it's very uh, antiquated. It's from like the 70s. So the original specs aren't very good as far as the tolerances, plus or minuses and all that stuff. And Gilo says they do a great job at holding high, holding high tolerances. Massive respects for them on that, in my opinion, right? I think that's excellent. And they say, or tend to blame, the variance of the actual shape of the detent and limbs and things like that as far as the size of the limb causing the issue. Best to my knowledge, Win and Win makes the g -Lo limbs, so they probably use similar or the same hardware in the actual detent. If not, hopefully somebody can comment below and let me know because uh, I don't know other than what I've read online. And so I believe that Win and Win makes their limbs. So this Win and Win limb should be the same spec as the Gilo limbs. So therefore, it shouldn't be the specs problems or the limbs problems of the tolerance issues that are causing this thing to not be able to come out of the bow. So what I want to do is I want to pull the actual adjuster block out of the bow and see where the actual grub screws are pushing on this piece and see if there's something going on that I can recognize as to what is this actual cause of the problem. All right, so just taking a look at this thing, it's aluminum, not even brass. I can tell because the anodizing is being scraped off. So you'll be able to see 
See the, the mark there from the grub screw on both sides and inside on the edges of the dovetail marks you'll be able to see kind of uh, scratches and stuff that have taken the anodizing off and it's now down to bare aluminum plus the piece is mighty light so it's aluminum. So what I'm imagining is because the screws come in from this angle like this, straight from the side, you can see where the two grub screw contact marks are, is right in the dead center almost of where the dovetail would reside once it's fully installed. And so what I'm imagining is happening is that the tension of the actual screws, because of the torque, is deflecting and bending these pieces closer together, closing up the inside space. And so... I think that there could be just a couple of small changes, including taking where this hole, where, where that grub screw is pushing, instead of pushing into the sides of the actual thing, pushing from the bottom of the actual adjuster. Because if you push into the bottom of the actual adjuster, you can see that it's solid all the way through and it won't distort. That would be one way that it could be solved as far as this problem. Another way that could be solved is taking the grub screw from being here and moving it up to this extra little chunk that's sticking out the sides. It's going to be a little more reinforced. Yes, you're going to get a lot more quicker adjustment because you're moving it closer to the pivot point, but you can still get very close with these threaded adjusters and get it perfect. And now you're pushing through a much more solid area. You can make this thing slightly thicker on the bottom, so when you move it down, there's more space for the actual grub screw to push against it. And I bet you the thing wouldn't distort if the grub screw is pushing in just a different location on the actual adjuster. The adjuster is not the problem. It's where the screw is pushing on the adjuster, in my opinion. I can do one test to actually see this and see if I can come up and to prove this actual change is happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back up to two newton meters, 17 pound feet inches, so technically under two newton meters, and I'm going to take my set of calipers and I'm going to measure the inside diameter or the inside length of this actual uh, the block, the adjuster block, tighten the thing down and see if the measurement changes and gets any bigger or smaller. So you see I'm zeroed. Ten point nine eight. Right, that's the smallest measurement. Take my little torque wrench here. One on that side. Two on that side. Two. And then take my calipers again. They're zeroed out. And again, we're looking for the smallest measurement here. 10.89 millimeters, 10.88. So it definitely has shrunk a considerable amount, a tenth of a millimeter. And a tenth of a millimeter can make all the difference to lock a limb in the bow, especially when the outside diameter of the flat spot of this is 10.97 millimeters. So anything less than that is gonna pinch the limb in place and lock the thing down so it can't get out. So yes, GLO's tolerances are really good, really, really tight. They do a good job of cutting those ILF things, the actual uh, dovetail female receiver slots. They cut them really close. They cut them in fact so close that the smallest amount of torque you exert onto those screws, the grub screws, that hold and adjust this thing back and forth, technically pivoting, it pushes it with such force that it bends and deforms the piece and locks the actual limb in place. Just take where the fastener is and move it down. Move it down onto a solid piece so that way when it pushes, it's transferring the load all the way through the piece instead of deforming the piece and pinching and locking your limbs in place. So, like I said, this wasn't a hater video. This was just a genuinely, I really like this bow. I really like Gelos. I have massive respect for Michele and for Vittorio. Both of them are great people. They've done so much for the sport. I've competed with Michele and he's an excellent stand-up guy and his dad is the same way. They do have a lot of knowledge and they have a lot of opinions, which is great. I'm glad that they stand by what they believe is best. But this is just something very simple. I Again, I have respect for them, and I would like to see 
their bow company not have this be a problem because I care. I care a lot. And I think that an archer and his father um, making a bow and selling it and supporting bear bow is amazing. They do a great job. They make a great product. It just has a small little flaw. And I really want to see this change because it could be so much better with some small, tiny, little adjustments. So I hope you can understand and appreciate why I took the time to do this because I've been having this issue myself. There's plenty of people out there that have this issue. There's so much information out there on the internet on how you gotta basically just barely tighten any of the fasteners and then glue them in place with some Loctite. And sometimes they come loose, sometimes they don't. I don't know. All I know is it just needs a slight change in where the grub screws come from the side of the bow and push on this block to adjust the limbs left and right. And then none of this issue would be happening. So I just wanted to do that because number one, I was curious what kind of torque could I actually exert on it using a torque wrench or a torque limiting screwdriver to get an approximate limitation on how much torque I'm using and then see what the actual issue is by examining the piece and coming up with a potential solution. I hope you enjoyed this video out there, and if you wouldn't mind, please do check out the many different links down in the description below on many different ways you can help support the channel, from affiliate links to Patreon to uh, YouTube memberships to apparel and all sorts of different things that you can find on jkaminski.com. Really appreciate everybody out there that helps support the channel. It allows me to do better reviews, more in-depth information, and share it with you. That way you can have a little bit more information at home and make better decisions when it comes to spending your hard-earned money.